Hey friends and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to draw, paint, uh, create a, an urban sketching scene from, um, it's actually the way to the grocery store here in the village where I live and um, yeah, I sometimes ran randomly take pictures of lighting or colors or sunsets and then I used them as inspiration to create something and this is what I did today. Um, the paper I'm using is a mixed media paper and now I'm getting an email, very professional, <laughs> is a mixed media paper and um, I bought this in Berlin and I've used it for some gouache but never for really wet on wet watercolor techniques or anything like that and so I wanted to try this out and if you want more information you will find them down below in the info box and yeah um, you've seen me drawing the rough sketch all in all the entire piece with waiting time for yeah, waiting for paint to dry <laughs> uh, was one hour so uh, it's not really a very detailed sketch now and I'm using waterproof ink uh, from Rohre and Klinger in my Kaveco Sports um, fountain pen. Yeah, you will later <laughs> see or if you've seen the thumbnail that uh, you can't really see the um, ink anymore later but it's just a nice touch and I wanted to have a um, you know, a sketch layer that is uh, visible throughout many layers of color and so I chose some... Actually, I'm just <laughs> experimenting <laughs> when I'm going to be honest with you. But I thought that the purple underneath the colors would be a nice touch and so yeah, that's what I did. And you can see here that I still don't really care for perspective. I think this is just the charm of urban sketching that you don't really have to worry too much about perspective or anything. You can just, you know, just go. <laughs> and I actually I like urban sketches without, you know, where you don't have a ruler that is measuring the perfect um, yeah, measurements <laughs> for everything. I like this much more. And what I didn't recall was that I used a white brush to completely wet the paper so it's uh, wet evenly and so I can paint wet on wet. So um, yeah, the colors I'm using are from Dunican Art. Uh, these are the colors my friends make and I made a video about them and I will link it down below so that you can check it out and I don't really remember the color names <laughs> so this is uh, cool but I remember that I had a very warm color palette here and that I only had warm primaries in this set so um, yeah. Uh, after now you will not really see me using my reference anymore I'm just at first I wanted to paint it like my reference but then I didn't like it and then I figured whatever it's my drawing painting I don't know I don't care <laughs> so um, yeah and so then I decided to do just do whatever and this was way more fun I think especially with clouds it's good to have a reference but it's not mandatory and you can do so much more expressive and fun things with just um, yeah your imagination and uh, some basic shapes and yeah this was fun <laughs> um, so um, and now you see me I didn't really want to mix anymore on the palette so I just mixed straight on paper and now I'm using this is the water soluble graphite by Artgraph and uh, these behave a bit like is it <sighs> Well, I, I can't really explain, but it feels a little bit like gouache, but not really. And uh, it's like really opaque um, white watercolor. And I really like this one a lot. So uh, yeah, so I'm using this for my white and for the sun. And uh, now you see me applying uh, a relatively thick layer of paint uh, to get down my next layer of wetness of what <laughs> of water to wet the paper um, for yeah the next layer I could have start, uh, stopped there as you see I think it, it would look it would have looked nice but I wanted to really go into painting and see what I can get out of the um, 
paints but also with how much the paper can handle and this was more like a stress test for the paper so yeah and this time I didn't really wet the paper all the way through so that I have some rougher edges in the clouds and uh, some yeah more blur blurred edges to give it a bit more realism because well not really realism but a bit more interest because you know when you look at clouds sometimes they are really defined in shape and sometimes they are not and I don't really know the yeah properties when a cloud is super fluffy and defined and when it's not so I don't really care so <laughs> I just uh, like to paint something that's interesting okay um, yeah and then I'm adding some more yellow to indicate that there are more clouds in front of the uh, sun and just building up my colors and building up my layers of colors and yeah then I'm adding more white. It's like I mentioned not super opaque so you can um, layer it a bit and this is really nice and also it flows really nice on wet paper and you can uh, mix it a bit with watercolor to get an opaque pastel-ish pastel <laughs> watercolor and yeah. And now I'm adding another cloud up there because I felt like the clouds were a bit too left heavy. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I can't really explain what I mean. <laughs> but now I'm getting into this uh, dark color. I can't remember the name anymore, but it feels like a cool bluish paints gray, maybe? <laughs> so um, yeah, like I mentioned, I will link the other video down below where the other colors, where, where I unpack the colors and there you can see what they are. But it's a, like I said, a dark, coolish gray color gray blue yeah and um, yeah this was really nice especially in contrast with the red it toned down the red on the edges a little bit and so yeah just gave it a nice pop of contrast in the clouds and gave it a bit more of an evening vibe feeling and not so much a burning sky feeling <laughs> though the sky is pretty much burning at this point so yeah then I let it completely dry once again well I'm mostly using a hairdryer okay so this is why it only takes one hour for me so if I wouldn't have then I still wouldn't be finished now because I was so much water on the um, paper that yeah it would have taken hours <laughs> but yeah now I'm not really going in and fully wetting the paper anymore but only uh, partially to um, get in some more depth on the higher on the on the upper part of the paper and now I'm getting some more uh, hard edges into the um, cloud on the right and yeah so that some of the cloud poofs <laughs> are in front of the sun so to speak and yeah once again just building up color building up layers really going in there with the the colors are really easy to activate but I'm still rubbing my brush really into the color so that it's really full of color and full of water and so I can really build up the layers and yeah and also as you might see I don't really care for um, you know painting into the foreground because later uh, this part will be super dark anyway so I don't really care I could also have added a red um, you know a red underpainting so to speak into the foreground but I will do something else later that you will see in a few seconds <laughs> probably so yeah and once the um, the sky is to my satisfaction so to speak <laughs> I don't touch this anymore because I'm the queen of overworking stuff so yeah uh, now I'm using this brown dark brownish sanguine color <laughs> I think it's yeah, it's a, it's a earthy dark brown and it's really nice. It's really pretty and it granulates a lot and I really love granulating colors. Still, <laughs> this hasn't changed in 2020 so far. So yeah, and this is what I'm using for a sort of underpainting in the foreground so that um, I can, you know, add the, the um, um, values into the foreground and then I let it dry once again or more like I dried it with the hairdryer and now I'm mixing this brown color with this bluish grayish color and you can already see the uh, fountain pen disappearing but at this point I'm still glad that I have the fountain pen under underneath so that I can see um, yeah where my line art is so if I would have just used a um, 
a pencil, then the line art would have disappeared in like two layers of paint. So yeah, that's nice. And now I'm going in with less water and more paint and I'm uh, defining more of the shadow parts and going more in depth. And now I'm just going straight into the, um, yeah, into the bluish color, <laughs> bluish dark color. And I define more shadows and more depth and uh, I'm going lighter and use less of the uh, dark color as I go into the background and so that the foreground is standing apart. And now I'm using a bit of a less soft uh, watercolor brush. It's still very soft, but for watercolor brushes, it's very stiff so that I can use it to define some more shapes because the um, brushes I used before were really really soft and um, yeah they hold a lot of water and they are nice for washes but this one is better for just adding um, you know uh, more details and more defined shapes. So yeah and this is what I'm doing now. I don't really care much for the um, sketch anymore. I just <laughs> smear over it. I could have done it a bit better in um, you know just just coloring in the sketch I did, but I'm not really into that. I wanted it to be a bit more loose and abstract, which is something that you might know that I always do. <laughs> you could say it's laziness, but I I call it style, okay? <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, and then I'm defining the areas here and there that the foreground and midground will um, pop from the background a bit more. They don't have to pop too much but I want them to be a bit darker but I also don't want them to be completely black like you know so yeah this was an experiment and I think it, it worked uh, rather well and I kind of regret that the um, lamp posts show in the direction of the paper I wish they would show to the paper so that they composition wise just you know point to the uh, center of the piece instead of uh, out of the piece, if you get what I mean. So yeah, this is like my only regret, but so far I really liked it. I still love these paints by Dunican Art so much. And now I don't just say this because they're from my friends. <laughs> and um, yeah, I also like the paper. It's not as nice as Arches or anything, but it's 300 GSM and um, yeah, it's nice paper. And it has a nice tooth to it, not too much. It's mixed media so next time I will probably try it with gouache a little bit so yeah anyway now I'm using way too many white splatters because I love white splatters and I <laughs> I don't know when to stop okay <laughs> and so I was just doop, 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 doop. I listened to some music and I didn't really care for anything in the world <laughs> and then I splattered all over the paper but oh, oh well <laughs> um, and yeah this is my video for this week if you like this video video up <laughs> if you like this video feel free to like and subscribe for new videos possibly every Wednesday you can subscribe and find out whenever I upload a new video and um, yeah I will leave you to it now <laughs> and yeah I will speak to you whenever I speak to you again and until then bye bye